Hello. How's it going? Good to see you guys again. Uh, it's Ern back again with a, another video. Uh, today, a little special, a little different. I'm vending this weekend. And so I thought what I would do uh, is show you everything that I'm planning to sell this weekend. Um, if you're at the East Bay Card Show in the Bay Area, zoom out a bit, uh, definitely check that out. Uh, I'll be vending there with a friend, with a couple of friends. Um, yeah, it's a big show, uh, in this area and it's, it's one of the ones that actually does quite well. So I am, you know, I am a Japanese seller. If you're new to the channel, I'm a Japanese seller. I, uh, specialize in Japanese stuff. Why? Because I love Japanese stuff, print quality, just everything about Japanese is so much better than English, at least for me. Um, I sell on eBay, TCG player, um, you know, across a bunch of different platforms. Uh, I'll first start off this video by saying, if you are someone who is looking to sell or trade, hit me up on IG. Um, always buying, always trading, always down to see what you got. Um, yeah, I've made a good amount of connections and deals so far since spinning up this channel. I figured I'd drop that here before I get started. So uh, let me first start and say, um, you know, I'll just get into it. So I will start with the slabs first because um, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Yeah, let me start with the slabs and singles. So you'll find that um, a lot of the stuff I've kind of unboxed before and shown, that's what I'm selling. Um, that's kind of the name of the game for me. Buy stuff uh, at some value where you know, when I resell it, I think I can get at least 30%. So 30% margin is the goal I've pinned to myself this year. Um, why do I do that? Well, honestly, if you don't really have a margin goal, you're just kind of guessing. And I think the thing I've learned since, you know, last year selling as much as I have is I need to stick to a certain margin if I want to continue to grow revenue. So that's basically it. Um, so my prices, how I price things is I go on to TCG Player, I go onto eBay. I go on TCG Player to look at English equivalents. I go to go to eBay to look at Japanese equivalents. Um, and since all my cards are Japanese, I price it somewhere in between. I look at the last sold or recent solds on eBay, and then I look at what's currently available. And then I also cross check that with the English counterparts um, on TCG Player. And the reason why I do that is because a lot of buyers in person who buy Japanese, um, they they're a little bit more receptive, I would say, to a slight markup on Japanese product that you could probably find on eBay. Um, and so that's what I'm hoping to capitalize on. Most of my pricing, I would say, is fair. I think these would go for like 90, 95 near mint on eBay. So it's like not that much of a markup. You know, I bought them significantly cheaper, so that's what I want to sell. So let's go through the stack. Um, everything here, some of it was from the collection. Uh, a lot of it is not, um, a lot of it has been purchased to resell. So, um, this Goku, I am collecting a lot of the secret rares, um, and the top hits in the new Dragon Ball game. But, you know, the key thing with this card is, um, I got it, you know, at a good price and in a BGS 10, it's actually worth, um, probably close to double what I paid. So I'm going to use this show as an opportunity to sell that. If I can't, I will keep it. And that's totally fine. My Glaceon, I have multiples of these. This is just another one that has, um, unfortunately, I've chosen to sell. Does this have a swirl? Not sure. Um, and my my trick or my angle selling and vending in person is I don't focus too much on ultra modern because everyone else does who sells Japanese. I try to find stuff that's mid-era, vintage, uh, stuff that I think really pops out. So this Charizard, I think I've opened up I opened this on the channel before and shared it. Uh, I have a target price for this. Uh, if it sells for that target price, great. I will, then I will try to acquire another one. If it doesn't, you know, I will keep it. My Lugia. I have multiples of these, actually. I have one in consignment, and I have another one of these sitting on the shelf. And this charger that I just opened. Um, you're probably asking, I thought, you know, you were going to keep this. The thing I've learned being in this space, and if you really want to power your business... You got to operate with the mindset of everything has a price. You can like cards, you can enjoy cards, you can keep cards. But honestly, if you're trying to keep everything and you're not willing to, you know, offload stuff, especially when you get a good price, I think that's going to limit your ability to scale and to grow. So let me pull some other slabs up. Oh, I'm not going to go through all the slabs, but I think this is the main batch that I'll, that I'll go through that I wanted to show 
that I will be selling. Oh, this is actually not the right. This is my. Uh, this is actually my my waifu, my trainer. Um, let me go through these. This is my trainer box of slabs. Um, I decided a couple years ago I was gonna collect trainers. I'll be honest, I don't particularly like them because they are trainers. I liked them at the time because I saw significant value in holding them. And I mean, sorry, I do like some of them, right? Like Misty, I grew up Misty, that's fine. But I'm not like a wife, you know, a waifu collector or whatever they say. Um, I purely have acquired these because I think as the more that you have, there's a set of collectors out there. I don't think the rest of this is actually worth going through. Uh, there's people out there who want this kind of stuff. And um, that's not a waifu. That's some Chinese stuff. And I can use it as trade beat. That's from um, Japanese Hidden Fates. So I'll put this back. Um, the last time I went to this show, sorry, I'm not organized. The last time I went to this show, I had about three different people come up and ask me if I had trainers, uh, just trainers. And um, I left them all at home because, I, you know, given the market and how, you know, everything's kind of cooled down, trainers are not selling that well these days. Um, I figured why bring them if they're not going to sell. So I'm bringing a box of those trainers ready to sell, ready to trade. If I don't sell or trade them, that's totally fine. Uh, but I want to have the optionality for when I, uh, you know, just in case you come across someone who wants that stuff. Okay. This is the main box. I'm just going to take it out and, um, we'll go, go through it. And then after we go through this, we're going to go through binders, which I think the binders are probably, you know, the, uh, the hot stuff if i if i had to say so myself so a lot of these slabs were from the collection that i moved over to inventory to sell um i have put this out to consignment before um but a lot of them just didn't end up selling um every every one of these has been priced with specific margin in mind and i would say the way i price things on the slab front i'm very um, I'm on the, I'm on the edge of generous slash competitive. And the reason why I do that is because on the generous end, at the end of the day, like if I'm still holding onto this battle reporter, um, it is money that I'm just, that I can't use elsewhere. So I want to get rid of it. I enjoyed this the time I had it, but you know, if someone comes up to me and says like, Hey, I'll give you 250. I would probably say yes. Um, so you don't want to be stuck with uh, dead inventory stuff that doesn't move. Um, that seems like obvious, an obvious thing, but when you are vending and you have so much stuff to sell, um, you always got to keep that in mind. Cause I don't want to come back, you know, Monday and have a lot of this stuff left over. I would much rather have it moved or have someone buy it all. Uh, this is a great card. Um, it comes in like a special gift box set with, um, Xerneas. Um, I've priced this a little bit above recent solds, but based on what's available, this is a great price at a hundred, this is 120 bucks, by the way. Uh, not twelve thousand dollars. This Unigaba, I bought this for like thirty, thirty-five bucks. So, you know, recent souls are sixty plus. That's a good, good flip. Pick a Pikachu, and then this awesome set of. Let's make some space. I have my Call of Legends PSA nine set, um, and I'm I'm looking to get rid of it as a set, primarily because, um, I just I think I'm done done with it in my in my collection i've moved it to inventory call of legends has dropped off a lot uh, since the boom uh most people just don't sorry i shouldn't say most people the hype for them died down and it hasn't really gone back up so a lot of the recent solds are quite brutal i think back in 2020 2021 when i started to complete uh, work on the set all the cards were at least 300 bucks um now many of them sell for below 300 uh, with some of them at like just 200 this card was one of the ones i got last um, i bought this from someone on facebook i i tried very hard to get this for a long time it took me about two years and then i finally got it so um sad to see it go but um you know this is one of the this is one of the uh sets i'm hoping to sell or trade this weekend i think all in all total value is around like three thousand. so let's see you know let's see if we can make get that to work um Let's go through the rest of this. This Pika, 15th anniversary. I'm pretty sure this is going to sell. Uh, 
you know, I got this for, um, seven or 800, I think, um, maybe about 800, um, recent solds are, are way more than that. And so if I can sell this between a thousand, actually, no, sorry, there's a recent sold that's like 900 or 950. And so I'm hoping the buyer recognizes that this is rare and that the previous recent solds are good, pretty good. Um, I'm hoping I can sell this for 11 or 1200. Um, we'll see if not at the show, I'm going to send it to the eBay vault. I'm positive. If I park it there, I have it up for listing. It will sell eventually. Uh, this dark rye 155, these espions, Giratinas, two of them, 600 is about market price. Um, and you have to pay sales tax. So if there's a buyer out there and Giratina is quite popular, um, so if someone's looking for it at the show, you know, they're going to be finding it through me. Steven, this is my second copy. 550 is probably a little aggressive. I'll, I'll probably dial, dial that down to like 475. Um, this is extremely niche, niche. Not a lot of people want it. Um, I mean, not a lot of people are interested in this trainer, um, but it's it's super cool. Um, yeah, hopefully it sells. My Stormfront Zard. Again, this is one of those, you know, I had it on display at home the right price comes for this considering it's unlimited i would definitely sell it um, and my mentality honestly going into the show is there's nothing that i'm selling that i can't acquire reacquire uh if for cheaper so um i would hate for this to go but for the right price it's definitely going to go look at that look at that texture skyla that's an aggressive price i sold this last on ebay uh for like 730 740 lowest listing is about 900 so we'll see i'm expecting someone to push back on that so um uh, professor's birch this is lowest listing i believe this is lowest listing it's psa nines i'm not sure these are going to go uh gorgeous cards you don't see them often one of my, my many charizard level x's this is the unlimited one um i decided as well since my other ones are in the vault ebay vault i'm okay putting this up if it sells i feel good about it because i can definitely get another one um one day this card is one of my favorites. This is a reverse hollow Zard from one of the Chinese sets. In English, this is a team up Charizard. Um, I like it because of the unique hollow pattern. And I've sold one of these before for about a hundred bucks. Um, so I'm hoping to get 85. We'll see. If not, you know, I'll probably just send it to keep in. Some rainbows. Nothing big here. Nita is another trainer. MQ, Snorlax. I have a couple of these, and so I'm selling a dupe. When Chilling Rain came out, I was actually really surprised that after people stopped like talking up the gold Snorlax, well, gold carts in general. Um, I remember the pre-release or when Poke Beach was like leaking information or whatever. People were super hyped for this card. Um, I'm sad that the hype's not really there anymore. Bonds to the end of time. The Platinum Hollow Arcanine. Another classic collection Pikachu. And then let's see what we got here. Steven's Resolve and Coach Trainer. Probably, you know, I'd probably take 75% of what I'm asking on this. And then this guy, honestly, I've had him for a while now. And I'd be fine if I took, you know, 100 120 for this guy. CP6 Zard. Uh, I decided, you know, my PSA copy I like a lot more. So this is at 240. I'd probably go down to like 210 for it. And then this Blastoise that I graded recently. I am sad he did not get a BGS 10. I was pretty positive he would. Uh, you don't see a lot of Expedition cards in BGS. Um, so I'm hoping, you know, PSA 10 goes for like 350 to 400. 9.5. If this crossed the PSA, it would definitely be a 10. And so one can hope. Um, that's it for slabs. I'm not going to go through the rest of them. I have a ton more, but most of those slabs are probably 100 bucks or less. Um, let me move my mouse out of the way. Let me pull up the binders, which I think are the stars of the show. One second.
All right. I'm going to start with what I think is the banger binder. The second, the second highest banger binder. And then I'll go to the absolute banger binder. All right. So, um, binders. I get this question from time to time. Why do you do binders? Um, when you go to a show, you'll find a lot of people love sifting through binders. They love seeing singles. They love seeing cards. And so um, I have a ton of singles um, and Japanese singles, albeit. And the challenge of Japanese singles is they're really hard to scale, scalably sell because there's no TCG player. You have to rely on Facebook, eBay. Um, you have to take pictures of everything. And so I've, had, I've sat on a lot of singles that I honestly haven't gone around to sell. But I think now it's about time I... Um, I offload them. I did also did buy a collection recently from Japan. And so um, um, a lot of these cards come from that collection. Uh, where should I start? So pricing wise, let me go through the methodology or the logic. Um, one, it's really hard to price Japanese singles, especially from vintage. Um, you can look at eBay. Generally though, price variance is, price volatility I should say is incredibly high. And so you kind of have to pick you know, some a good price point between what's recently sold, what's currently available, and create some logic there. From what I've seen when I go to shows, you don't really find like a consistent price for, you know, a dark Charizard in Japanese. You might find it for something in English, but Japanese is just not a lot of data points. And so what I try to do is look at eBay, recent solds, eBay available, and then TCG player the same as the other methodology I mentioned earlier in the video, and I pick a price point from there. At the end of the day, I think if the prices don't move the cards, I can always lower them on day two or later in day one. And so um, I have, I will be fully honest here, I have priced these very aggressively because I'm trying to make a good margin and get paid for a lot of the money I spent in acquiring this stuff. So um, most of the cards here, so you have the Dark Charizard from Rocket. You have the CD promo and the um, um, V Just Deck uh, Venusaur. The same thing for the Blastoises. These are cards you don't really see, especially these two. Um, you're not really going to see them in most shows you go to, except maybe like a Collecticon uh, at some some tables. Uh, all the cards, I would say, ninety nine percent of them are between uh, light played and then moderately played. There's not a lot of near mint stuff in here. Um, so just keep that in mind with my prices. Like I'll use this example. I'm asking 25 bucks for this, this Gengar, which is not a terrible price, but I think I should, it's messed up. So I'm expecting someone to pull this out and say, you know, they really want this card and this card otherwise would be gorgeous, right? They're gonna look at this and say like, hey, 25 bucks is too much, would you take like 15? In that case, I would say yes, uh, but it's always better to start a little bit higher and to get you know, see who has interest um, and then have a conversation with them. Then price lower and then you never know what you could have gotten out of the singles. Again, a lot of these singles, I think if you check eBay, it's, it's a, uh, you know, you don't see a lot of data points. Um, so I tried, did my best pricing. Um, and these two actually, I think are actually closer to near mint. Sorry, I lied. There are some cards that are closer to near mint, but uh, this has this one. Some a smudge there, corner there. It's probably like light play plus, but you know, someone comes up, they look at it and they say, hey, would you take 35? I would probably say yes. Um, come on. So that's vintage. I price the cards really if they are desirable accordingly. So you have the Dragonites, these trainers, Misty's Tears, both versions. And then here on out, you get, you know, Neo, second and third gener uh, second and third sets, Fossil, Jungle. So, you know, you're probably looking at this and wondering, will this sell? I've recorded all this. We can recap afterwards. I'll see what moves on the first day. If none of it moves, I'll just cut everything down by 25, 30%. No harm, no foul, right? Uh, but I think like if you're selling something that's super old and, you know, the audience for this kind of stuff 
it's not as plentiful as someone as the audience that likes English uh, vintage, obviously. And so I'm really trying to target those people who like Japanese stuff and are willing to pay somewhat of a premium because they know they can't find this stuff anywhere else. Um, so here on out, I think the cards go down like seven and six bucks. And the way I did it was cards that I don't think are worth marking up. I just leave it five bucks. So anything that doesn't have a sticker is five bucks. And you know, let's, let's use an example. This pillow swine with a swirl. Doesn't look too bad, right? Okay, the corners, the edges, you look at the back. You know, it's, it's like light played minus, moderately played plus, I don't know. We can debate, but for five bucks, I think this is extremely fair price. Like it's an E-Series card. Is it a desirable card? No, but it's E-Series and you don't really find that. Um, Neo stuff, gym stuff, Neo, Neo Destiny, Neo Genesis. Well, actually mainly Neo Destiny. Neo Destiny, um, the gym sets, E-Series. Those are the ones that I think fetch the highest premium, no matter the condition of the card. People like them the most. Uh, Fossil Jungle Base um, don't really. Like the demand for them, I think, is way less. So I put those promo Pikachus in here and price them accordingly. Let's see if they sell. If not, I'm taking these off and going to eBay. So that's the uh, that's the vintage binder. I hope that it sells well. And, uh, you know, I hope there's interest in it. Now, let's... Um, actually, let me show... On sec. Yeah, I'll, I'll save the, the Banger Binder for last. This is my modern Sun and Moon Sword and Shield Scarlet Violet set. Uh, binder? Not set, sorry. No stickers, three bucks. Um, I just flipped through it. So what you'll find here is a lot of CHRs and ARs from Japanese sets. And I like these because if you're an English collector, let's say for this Magikarp. This Magikarp is like 80 bucks now, 70 bucks now. Um, in English, hard to find, especially in near mint. Um, the Japanese alternative, much cheaper. And the angle I'm trying to go here for by having this in this binder is maybe there's an English collector out there. They see this, they say 25 bucks, that's a good price. I'm making good margin on that. And they're also getting a card that they that they like in, in an incredible condition because, you know, Japanese rocks. Um, so a lot of this stuff is from Sun and Moon, primarily, Sword and Shield, uh, that's not right. That should be six bucks. I need to price some of this stuff still. These Zards are going to sell. You know, I bought four of these for 10 bucks, um, and from Japan. I'm going to potentially sell four of them for 36. We'll see. But, uh, last show I sold a bunch of them at eight or nine bucks pretty easily. Peach two promos, some random trainers. I think these are probably priced too high. They should probably just be at like four, four bucks. Like who who's really out there trying to buy Opal? I I don't know. You know, more of the same stuff, some random Southern Island stuff, promos, illustrators. Um really I just jammed this binder full of what I had left over and hoping that I would sell. This binder was used at the previous show. So I actually didn't touch it at all, and I'm just refilling the pages. That's why, you know, there's there's like a mess of cards everywhere. Uh, basically, if you see these cards plug in gaps, it's because I sold a lot um, from the previous show. Um, yeah, this binder did fairly well, and I'm hoping this time around, given the show's two days, uh, it'll sell even better. So I got some more CHRs back here, rainbows, some decent stuff in here, I would say. Um, I'll probably take these out. These didn't sell. And then my backups are managers. So that's the uh, that's one of the Japanese modern binders. I lied. I'm going to keep that mid-era binder for last. This is the other Japanese modern binder uh, with some <laughs> some Chinese. And then I didn't have space for this in the other binder, so I put this here. 20 bucks for charge at level X. You're probably saying, what's wrong with it? This thing is beat up. It's probably heavily moderately played to heavily played. But you got to understand this card show in America, in the Bay Area, where English is predominantly what people collect and see, this sticks out like a sore thumb in a good way. Uh, I sold multiple raw copies at the show last time 
for about 15 to 25 bucks. This is going to sell for 20 bucks. I'm, I, I guarantee it. Uh, Detective Pikachu, I still need to price that. Um, those Rainbow Zards I got from Starbirth. Uh, I have a lot of classic collection in here, and they sold okay last time. Um, I refilled some of the pages, and I'm really trying to push, hey, do you like this stuff? Have you seen this stuff? Um, you should buy mine. Um, classic collection, for whatever reason, people just don't like it. Um, I'm probably going to have to start listing these on eBay for pretty cheap soon because I just have stacks and stacks of all these different singles. Um, so let's see if they sell. More Detective Pikachu, more Classic Collection. What else is in here? So no sticker on this one is 2 bucks. Promos. These these promos, they sell well because people have never seen like the stamp before and then the... You know, that kind of stuff. Um, I sold a handful of these Eevees, a couple of these guys, a couple of these guys at the last show. Some shiny treasures. This probably won't sell. We'll see. You know, some of this stuff. More extras in the back. So, uh, it's not as organized as I would like, but, you know, it's... I'll tell you one thing. If you're looking to vend and you have a full-time job, it takes up a lot of energy to organize, to get binders cleared up, to organize binders, especially. Um, and so, you know, I did the best I could um, so far. And um, this is the this is the key binder. So um, before I get into it, I'll start by saying, again, going back to Japanese singles, um, vintage... Going into E-Series, EX, mid-era stuff is very hard to find singles compared to English. Um, so the Japanese stuff is harder to find than English stuff. That's obvious, right? And so part of that is like the only price points that you can find are going to be on eBay or also the Japanese sites. But, you, but the Japanese sites are generally... Um, sometimes they're just as the same or as competitive as eBay. And so when you price stuff, you have to really, um, you have to really be mindful of there aren't a lot of data points out there in that if you're trying to sell stuff, you got to make it appealing to people. So for me, what I did, I took eBay last solds, what's available on eBay and then TC player again. And then I added some aggressive pricing on top. I did that with this era because this is by far the hardest, most rare uh, era to find. Um, I guess that, that'd be the same too in English, right? Um, but especially in Japanese, um, it's more plentiful in Japanese than English, but, um, it's hard to find these cards in light plate and near mint. Um, so this is the EX era, some amazing cards here. I will hopefully not, uh, disappoint you, but I'm asking 85 bucks on this. It is definitely a loved card, but Given that it's rare in English, I think in moderately played, heavily played, I like that it was going for like 120, 130. I think 85 is more than fair price for a card that you just don't find in other places. Uh, I would say none of these cards are PSA 10 worthy. They are definitely moderately played to light played. So I'm definitely leaning to the angle of, hey, do you like mid-era stuff? Does this appeal to you? Well, here. Here you go. So pricing, um, I made sure that the floor for these is no cheaper than, no lower than I think 10 or 15, 10 or 12 bucks. Um, and I think that's justified, right? These are hard cards to find. And, you know, if someone really wants this, this, um, this Sneasel, it's like, hey, would you take eight? I would do that. I just don't want to price things too low to the point where, um, you know, I would be second guessing myself that I could probably get more. This is probably the most favorite card in this lot because it has this fat boy swirl you see that this is actually priced fairly well compared to what's recently sold on ebay so hopefully someone sees that and they say i really want that card dragonite from ruler of the heavens um great card you know my my plan to replace this because a lot of this came from the collection that i moved over to inventory um I would love versions of these that are graded first. The secret with mid-era stuff, maybe it's not really a secret. 
raw copies generally um, aren't worth getting compared to PSA 9s. Um, and I don't know why. I mean, the market just doesn't doesn't agree that these cards should be treated like English versions. Um, you can find very cheap PSA 8s and 9s of these cards for a couple multiples more than what you would pay for them raw. Um, so keep that in mind. If you're someone who likes to collect, someone who's really interested in getting these cards, the greater route is not a bad idea. Um, it is known that EX era, mid era cards, uh, they don't sell well. Uh, sorry, I shouldn't say that. The volume, sales volume and price volatility are, uh, sales volume is low, price volatility is high. If you put some of the stuff for auction, it might go well under what you're asking, what you hope to get for it. So keep that in mind. By graded, single versions, uh, be very careful. Um, you know, obviously I'm sharing this video, I'm trying to sell this stuff, um, but buy for me if you like this stuff and if you're at the show. So um, I'm hoping this page really stands out and it should. EX, uh, Rock, it's called Rocket Gang Strikes Back in Japanese. Great set, beautiful cards. Um, where's the... This is the one I wanted to show. This comes from the silver deck. It's a half deck um, in Japanese, but I just want to show that that hollow. It's beautiful. And this guy, this version of the Tyrannosaur in this set is pretty hard to find from what I've from what I've uh, from my experience. So hoping twenty five bucks for it sells. I think in English that has the reverse with the stamp on it. Arcanine, this Arcanine is one of my favorite artworks. Um, it's not in great shape, I'm not going to lie. But uh, hopefully the buyer... <laughs> okay, this is probably fairly aggressively priced for $17. Bucks. Um, I'd let it go for 10 You know, I'm not trying to like... I'm not trying to rip people off. But the truth is, this stuff is really hard to find. And I think in most cases... Finding a buyer for this stuff is not not too difficult, and if I just need to tweak the price a little bit um, to sell this stuff, I'm I'm happy to do that. So more, we're going into Delta species. These cards are Japanese exclusive promos. Um, they are not in English, so they're awesome, awesome, awesome cards. This Blastoise is actually in really good shape. I remember I decided to. There's the Dane. I had two of these. I graded the other one. The other one's in my case over there. This is the one that got left behind. And I was going through the binder, flipping and flipping, flipping, and I realized I still had him. So hopefully he sells. This Dragonite, one of my favorite Delta Species cards. Just, I really love the artwork for this stuff. You know, I, I wasn't in the hobby when these sets were out. Um, and so a lot of my... I don't have a lot of nostalgic feelings for this stuff. But as I look through them now, like, you know, I love Delta Species where you have Pokemon who are a different type than what they would normally be. I just think the concept's really cool. Like a grass, you know, grass Snorlax. I think these were a little bit easier and guilt-free to price because on TCG Player, you know, in the same condition, they sell for like, in English rather, they sell for two, probably three to four X. Uh, no, probably two to three X of what I'm asking for. And so I think it's more than fair it's competitive with eBay as well. And then we're going closer into mid-era Diamond and Pearl. These cards are non-hollow. They come from a uh, deck. In English, there are hollow versions of them. You have the Call of Legends Snorlaxes at 15 bucks. That is very, that's a very good price uh, for those guys. Lugia from Japanese um, Secret Wonders. Dragonite. Yeah, so the rest of the stuff, rest of the cards past this point, I think most of them are five or three bucks or less. Yep, so no stickers, three bucks or less. Um, I did that because there are a lot of hollows in there that, you know, I think they, uh, they have been extremely loved. Um, but given the rarity and the appeal of some of these cards, like this Arceus, um, this Giratina, right? This is exclusive texture to it's Japanese. Five bucks for that when it's moderately played, heavily played. I 
I think that's a good price. It'll appeal to the right person who likes Giratina, who likes Japanese. Um, so a lot of these came from the second collection I bought. You know, it's mid era stuff. Three bucks if it, three bucks if it has no sticker or if it's marked with three bucks. Hopefully, there's stuff here that y'all recognize and appreciate. This should probably be five bucks, but whatever. The metal gross. Yeah, I think that's that's really it. This is everything I plan to bring with me to the card show. Um, you know, next week sometime when I get my bearings, I will recap everything, go through the same binders, hopefully show what I sold, and uh, well, hopefully there's no binders to show because someone bought it all, bought them all. So I think that's it. Um, thank you guys for watching. Um, appreciate all the support I've been getting recently. If you have any comments or questions or feedback, drop them below. Hit me up on IG. Uh, but yeah, I'm uh, I'm pumped. If you're in the Bay Area, go to the East, East Bay Card Show. Um, yeah, and see if there's anything here that you like and would like to buy. All right, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Uh, take care of yourselves. Oops. Peace.